Hello fellow collectors, I hope you are doing very well indeed. It's been a little while since I last cared all that much about steelbooks, though I have still been picking up the odd one or two here and there. But more recently, for some unknown reason, I found myself becoming more interested in them again. And I actually came across some pretty incredible deals on Amazon Italy, and so I decided to take the risk of having them shipped internationally and placed an order, and I'll take you through the ones I picked up today. Thankfully these all arrived more or less intact. A couple of them have little bits of damage but thankfully nothing too bad. So a bit of a departure today from the usual type of films that I like to talk about as most of these except this top one here are quite mainstream. So without any further ado let's get into it. First up is U571. This was a film I just re-watched recently in March for the first time in over 20 years and put in my honourable mentions for the best films I saw that month. I thought I'd missed out on not only the steelbook but also any edition even with a slipcover for this one so coming across the 4k steelbook was a real delight. I really enjoyed watching this one again. It's got a great cast with the likes of Matthew McConaughey, Bill Paxton and Harvey Keitel. It's a film that is full of tension, where along with the characters on screen you are on the edge of your seat and afraid to make the slightest sound. An absolutely brilliant World War II drama, and one that I very much look forward to checking out in 4K. The steelbook itself has a matte finish, but does have some lovely debossing on the title, which is a nice touch and not something I was expecting to see. Next up is Cross of Iron which is another Studio Canal steelbook, and it's another one that I thought I'd missed out on by quite a long way. It's actually been out of stock here in the UK since last year, so to come across the 4K steelbook, and for such a reasonable price, was again a real treat. I talked about this film more in my Best Films I Watched in December video. Despite being convinced after a few minutes into this one that I wasn't going to like it, I ended up finding it incredibly impactful and really affecting. This is a brutal war film, from a perspective that we rarely get to see on screen, but it works so incredibly well. It is a hard watch at times, with some brutal violence. It has plenty of long battle sequences where there is just a constant barrage of bombs and explosions, and it just shows you how horribly unrelenting things must have been. It's a disorienting story at times, where dream and reality almost mix and you aren't quite sure what is happening. Overall though, a riveting and harrowing tale that is frankly unforgettable. The steelbook itself here has a matte finish, and though I don't think it's gloss, it does have some nice highlights on certain sections of the artwork. Up next is 300. I have the lovely Mondo edition of it here, though sadly it does have that ugly ratings logo on the slipcover that unfortunately isn't a sticker, which is a bit of a shame. This is a film I haven't seen in many years, though I do remember going to the cinema to see it when it came out, and I was with a friend who loved it so much he was watching it for the second time. I was watching something recently with Lena Headey, and it got me thinking about 300 again, as I remember her being a particularly great character in it, as well as this one featuring a young Michael Fassbender in a role which surely propelled him on to greater things in his career. It's a film that is of course very stylized, with a unique look for the time, being from 2006, very akin to the graphic novel that it's based on. It is of course a very violent film, and one that has been overquoted to death at this point, <laughs> but still a film that I recall had a solid and interesting story that I really look forward to seeing again soon. Next up is quite a change of pace, and it's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Now, it might surprise you to learn that I quite enjoyed this film. The current state of the MCU is of course a bit of a mess, and this film I think reflects that in a lot of ways. There is some absolutely garbage editing here, some disgraceful looking CGI. I wasn't really a fan of Cassie's character at all, and despite it being called Ant-Man and the Wasp, Evangeline Lilly has almost nothing to do in this film. But despite its many problems, there was just something about this one that I had a lot of fun with. I liked Michelle Pfeiffer a lot, she hasn't lost a step and gave a solid performance. Jonathan Majors is also really quite good, despite his accent hitting a few rocky patches along the way, 
but he had great presence and was an intimidating villain. I don't know, maybe it's because I hadn't seen a superhero film for a while, maybe it's because I was expecting to hate it, but what can I say? It made me smile, it made me laugh, and it just charmed me in some inexplicable way. A bafflingly enjoyable ride. But did I go temporarily insane? Does my enjoyment of this film invalidate all my other film opinions? <laughs> Only you can decide. For me, it was just good, silly fun. The Steelbook itself has a really nice glossy finish and some nice artwork too, I think. Then we have The Flash. And I'll be honest that I struggled to get through this one when I first watched it. It was pretty shockingly terrible for quite a lot of it. Much of the humour didn't land for me, and Ezra Miller was unbelievably annoying and really quite unlikable. His version of The Flash has sadly never worked for me in any of the DC films. But what I did really like about this one was Supergirl. I thought she was absolutely brilliant, and each scene she was in made the film a little better. She was played by Sasha Kali, who had just a great on-screen presence, and I found her really intriguing as a character. I was gutted to hear that they have recast Supergirl already, so we won't get to see how far that actor could have gone in the role, which is just such a shame. So in some ways I wanted to get this one to support her performance, and of course what's not to like about Michael Keaton playing Batman again? He certainly got to go nuts. So <laughs> a film I will revisit when enough time has passed, and for the grand total of about £14, I thought it was worth it. Up next is Quantum of Solace, Daniel Craig's second outing as James Bond. Now I've really been enjoying Solitary Ronin's series on his channel, where he's been talking about his favourite films of each decade. And I like that he always says these aren't necessarily what he thinks are the best films, just his personal favourites. And of course, it got me thinking about what my favourites are. And I think Casino Royale could well be my favourite film from the noughties as I think it might be my most re-watched film as an adult, as I find myself wanting to revisit it more often than most. And it was the only Bond film that I owned with a 4K steelbook. Well, I thought it might be nice to own all of Daniel Craig's films in 4K, so I decided to grab Quantum of Solace, which I don't mind to be honest. It may not be great, but I've certainly seen worse Bonds, that's for sure. Either way, the cast here is superb, with Matteo Almaric, Giancarlo Giannini and Jeffrey Wright, alongside Gemma Arterton and Olga Kurilenko, who were all really enjoyable in their roles. And of course, Daniel Craig does another great job as Bond. It's one I think where you can just turn your brain off and enjoy it for what it is. Despite this one being the Italian steelbook, I can say that there is no change to what we got in the UK, with just a flat matte finish. Then, nicely following on from Quantum of Solace, we also have No Time to Die, which was an absolute bargain at under £11 for the 4K steelbook. A real steal, you might say. <laughs> that one's for Sam if he's watching. I definitely have my problems with this film, but to be fair, it took me a few viewings to really appreciate Spectre, and I think my dislike of that one originally, and why it's still got such mediocre ratings, all comes down to just the last 15 minutes, which are so poor they leave you with this sour aftertaste at the end, which seems to erase all the brilliance you've seen over the two hours which come before it, which is such a shame. I did give No Time To Die a pretty scathing review on Letterboxd. As much as I love him, Craig here looks bored and tired, and considering what he said once Spectre finished is unsurprising. Leia Seydoux seems to be the only one that really commits here, and she is again great because of it. And though it had some decent action, I still think the entire Cuba subplot was superfluous for the most part. And Malik's character here was left with so little to do, which I just found baffling. He was just a plot device, rather than anything more than that. Yet, in spite of all that, I am happy to own this one, as perhaps it's another one where my opinion on it will change over time as I revisit it, and maybe there's more to find here than first meets the eye. Either way, it's nice to complete both my overall Bond collection, as well as, of course, Daniel Craig's run as the character. The steelbook itself here has a nice glossy finish, which is a nice touch. And then last but not least, we have the comedy classic Wayne's World, from 1992. I only own this one on DVD, so it's really nice to get an upgrade to the Blu-ray. 
and also nice to get a steelbook edition of it, all for under £11. Now, I've not seen this one for years, though I'm pretty sure I could still quote at least three quarters of it. But it's just a brilliant, laugh-out-loud funny film for me. It's one that I watched endlessly as a teenager, so it holds that special place in my heart. Though this edition was for the 30th anniversary, I do think it's a bit of a shame that it only includes the first film, as a double pack with both of them would have been much better, I think. And also because they didn't do anything for the 30th anniversary of the second film, though, as I recall, it's a great and hilarious sequel. Stemming from some great characters that Mike Myers and Dana Carvey did on SNL, who could have predicted that we'd get two feature films from them, and that they'd be so good? Endlessly quotable and enduringly funny. Thank goodness these films come from the old days, when studios didn't do things to death, so we don't have ten of these films which just get worse and worse. Instead, we just have two great ones to enjoy. Well. That brings us to the end of the video. That's everything from me and all my recent Steelbook pickups. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.